This is um, taking a walk of the day. Sometimes you just don't want to walk, but you just got to get out. You know, if you go outside, one of the things that I learned uh, doing some mentorships is walking, man. You don't necessarily go to have to go to the gym and you don't necessarily have to go out to the mountains. You could just like step outside your house and start walking. And uh, it's one thing that I, I know like Thomas Jefferson used to do nine hours a day of walking and he came up with all his brilliant ideas by just contemplating, you know, There's something about just normal walking, not exerting, no weights, no running, no anxiety, just doing what we were meant to do. And uh, anyways, for me, sometimes I get lazy <laughs> and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I get motivated, but I like to stay motivated. I need I need certain things to motivate me. And I think everybody's like that, you know, being dejected or rejected uh, can really take a toll. And everybody's experienced rejection and that feeling of dejection, you really want to kind of wipe it off your, your psyche. And part of that has to do with just like getting, you know, doing the work. And of course, everybody knows that when you do work, you know, um, you can get recognition and, uh, that also inspires you, right? And the de dejection, dejection and the rejection turns into confidence. And I've been down in the dumps. I've been really high up both in between. And what I've learned is you want to, you don't want to go down, man. And you don't want to go up too high either. You want to coast. And... You know, people can do what they want, but I I think if you if you rise too fast, you can fall uh, too fast as well. And um, it's like a tree, you know, that grows, and a storm comes, and a little baby tree will get get ripped out. A big oak can can stabilize and you know it's it's interesting I do believe in the protection of originality and this is the uh, this is what the the recording is about because I'll tell you for me as an artist musician uh, you know the orthodox community in all its orthodox like normalcy they need uh, originality they crave it. They want it. They can't stand the monotony, like, nine-to-five reality without creativity. But meanwhile, that creativity is also frightening. It's also destabilizing. And it's also cathartic. And it, br it, it bridges the chaos with the order. And artists are like, I used to say... They're like the policemen of the unknown. They go out and they make something uh, popular. And then everybody does it. It becomes a standard. And over and over throughout history, you'll see history. You'll see that people that are kind of like the oddballs, if they can withstand the storm of being original, uh, they usually create mass change. You know, look at Galileo. <sighs> Uh, said that the <laughs> the sun didn't revolve around the earth man people were pissed off and killed him but whenever you attack established precious established traditions you know you're going to get backlash I've had backlash in my personal in my uh, family in my own relationships professional relationship you when I, whenever you are creative and uh, original there can be there can be a lot of there can be a lot of movement that people aren't necessarily ready for so one of the things I learned in art school is be be really educated in the arts 
and then be as prepared as you can be for shaking things up. You can't just shake things up without falling on some sort of history because then you understand what it is to question authority. Then you understand what it is to think outside the box. And a creative energy helps you with creative problem solving skills. So if you can craft, like hone in on your craft of creativity, uh, you will be able to solve more problems um, as you as you go through life. Now there's some problems <laughs> that I have encountered and I'm like, whoa, I was not expecting that problem. That one was way huge and sometimes it'll take me years to figure it out. Especially if it's interpersonal relationship problems because a lot of my art and my music and my life is driven by emotive reasons, you know? It's not, as an artist, I'm not driven by money. And I'm, I'm driven by the future. Now, there's people that are driven by money, and that's fine. But there's only so many bling, bling cars and bling, bling houses and <laughs> bling, bling, uh, you know, houses that you can get eventually. A lot of people that I know that are super wealthy, they're super empty inside. Creating an emotive relationship with our creator whatever that is to you means that you're in accordance with your purpose and that is the only thing really worth pursuing because it doesn't matter if you have all the money in the world it doesn't matter if you're the greatest artist in the world it doesn't matter if you have the greatest relationship in the world if you are not co-creating with your purpose in life then What's happening is you are denouncing your spirit and the spirit of, of the creator. You know, again, everybody has an idea of what the creator is. Some people think it's a creatress. Some people think it's just the Tao. Whatever you call your religion, wherever you seek your, your um, wherever you get your, your spiritual sustenance from, Okay, this place is co-creating with your soul. And one thing that I do know about the galaxy and the universe and God and the co-creative force that we're all involved with is that, like Buddha said, three things always come out. The sun, the moon, and the truth. And one of the things that I've learned is that the, when the truth comes out, you know, truth spelled backwards is hurts. <laughs> because I study a lot of, I love phonetics as an artist, as a musician, as a poet. I, I study words and I glean their meaning. And when you find out a truth that you were not capable of understanding at the moment, what happens is you, you get hurt. You get your hurt, your feelings hurt, your mind gets hurt, your body gets hurt. There's a lot of things that can happen to bring that pain. And that pain usually has to do with the understanding that there is a divine energy and a divine guidance for each person. I'm not a spiritual leader. I'm an artist. But I do know that if you don't follow your purpose, uh, you're going to have a hard time in this life. Because the universe, the way it's set up, is like this is like an earth school you know so there's certain rules that are applied certain things that w certain lessons that we need to learn and you know someone's lesson and uh, purpose is to have children some people's lesson and purpose is to be an artist and the orthodox in between it all can't tell you who and what you are and what your purpose is. Only you and your connection with your soul. And that's why meditation is cool. That's why yoga ends up being cool. That's why eating right be, is, is cool. That's why walking every day is cool. Because you're tapping in to 
you're, you're creating an environment that is healthy for you to download what your purpose is. And this could be unique for everybody. It, it is unique for everybody. So, you know, somebody's a uh, huge entrepreneur, multi-million dollar uh, company may go bunk if, it, if it's not applying to the service of humanity. And we've seen that over and over and over again. Eventually, if you're doing stuff only for the personal gain of yourself or a few people, and it's, it, you know, it, it doesn't apply to everyone, um, then you'll find a lot of resistance. As an artist, it's a little bit different because it's, it's almost like the other way around. It's like imploding is might be the reason why you're here helping other people implode into their creative spirit and into their creative juices and actually start believing in themselves instead of believing what everybody through your life may or may not be telling you especially family because they're worried about you they want you to do good they don't understand the creative process it scares them and that's how the orthodox world is. But they secretly crave that creativity. And when we unite our purpose with that creative force that is in our bodies and in our purpose, then it gives other people the license and the courage to follow their dreams and their purpose. You know... That yes, there, there, there are, there is a predatory aspect to everything. You know, a, a beautiful flower has a thorn. But from what I understand, the universe will bloom whether or not there is a thorn on that rose. It's going to bloom. Flowers, trees, Men, women, careers, art, music, uh, money, entrepreneurs, everything is moving towards thriving. And anything that is suppressing will eventually fall away. Why? Because it's not truth. And so this, this is the thing that we need to understand as a people but for me as as an artist dealing with other artists and dealing also with, also with the orthodoxy it's it's everything is moving towards the divine creator everything is moving towards the higher consciousness and when we i i had this like you know when you <laughs> I had this realization when I used to jam with these guys and we were jamming like nine hours straight and I I went I went into like these realms of like what I think is like enlightenment and I was downloading answers, you know. And what I saw in my mind's eye after like nine hours of jamming, what I saw was that the universe is like in a spiral galaxy and it's like a spiral energy and this spiral energy opens up possibilities and gates and one of the epiphanies that I had was that everything bad that is happening to you is actually falling off of you it's like hitting your body and then falling off relationships are falling off jobs are falling off family is falling off you know, um, projects are falling off. And it seems like this is hell. It seems like, man, we are living in hell. But what's actually happening, if we can just remove ourselves from the trajectory of self-worth, like self, um, like the, not self-worth, but like being uh, centric, you know, self um with the ego if we can just remove ourselves a little bit and move into our higher self we see that all these people and all these things that like 
we lost is actually the best thing that could happen. And when you come from the place, you're like, thank you for showing me what I don't want. Again, it's thank you for showing me what I don't want. Because the universe in that creative vortex that is you and your co-creative relationship with the universe, it's not going to let you uh, deal with certain things that are going to eventually take you down. And yes, there's lessons in that, you know, it's like, oh, I'll, I'll let you suffer a little bit longer until you can finally release that relationship. I'll let you suffer a little bit longer until you can release that addiction. I'll let you suffer a little bit longer until you release that family member. I'll let you suffer a little bit longer until you release that disempowering belief system. And when you see that it's all moving towards the benefit of the universe, then basically you're like, wow, I may not be completely fully in control. There is something that is moving through me that has an intelligence to it and has an intelligent force to it, of course. So that's why anything dark and scary and mean and uh, abusive doesn't doesn't last for very long. And if it does last long, it usually gets exposed. And that exposure is it, it's both shocking and revealing. And it happens to everybody. Everyone has that moment of truth where their eyes open to something that no longer is serving their life. So the point is not of me talking about this is not to go deep. The point is to really cultivate that relationship between you and your purpose through creativity. And that's why I really love the arts and music and dance and poetry and and the freedom, the, the power and the freedom to think as you wish and practice um, as you wish, so long as it doesn't hurt anybody. And when, you know, it, it does come down to intention and when it hurts you or hurts somebody else, that's when it, the, the universe is like, ah, it's almost like it gives you like this red <laughs> flag, you know, and you, you see the red flag and everybody else sees your red flag. And it's like, I'm not doing things right. And this is, again, a spiritual concept, you know. It's interesting because art and creativity really pulls out a lot of the fear. It works with fear. It works with sadness. It works with anger. It works with aggression. It works through the emotional baggage, sometimes through the history of your family, the history of your relationship, the history of sickness and illness and disease in the body, you know. If somebody wanted to start dancing and like work out their emotions through dancing, they probably can cure themselves of cancer. This is emotive, creative energy that you tap into. And it's powerful. And it's healing. And it's, it's a muse, you know. Um, and then there's the abuse of power through the arts. And we have to be... Uh, aware of that because why ultimate power is ultimate corruption you can't be so powerful that you can't include uh others to um bring bring in and this is where the like bring them in and this is where the enlightenment comes in because you talk to all these sadhus and everybody in india and they're like you are me i am you and you're like what Damn, that's deep. And I'm not going there, but, you know, you have to take into account that these guys are really smart. These spiritual gurus, they, they know that what you do to another person will ultimately affect you. That's jacked up, yo. In a survival of the fittest, dog eat dog, that kind of mentality. Uh, this is the illness. That is the sickness. That is the, the, that is the disease. 
Because if you tap into what survival of the fittest is, it's just, you know, subconscious uh, electromagnetic Akashic force that says this person's going to have children and this person's going to be an artist or this person is going to do that. Not that you can't do both, but for me personally, I chose a strict path of the artist and a deep commitment to my own uh, professional awareness of what creativity was and all it's good, it's bad and it's ugly. And I'm, I've always practiced morality and moral thinking and moral understanding, but I've also given myself the license to just do whatever I wanted to do creatively. And that's really scary. That's a really scary place to be because you can get backlash. You can get made fun of. You can get trashed on. You can have people jealous of you. You can have them hunting you and wanting to kill you because you're expressing yourself it's it's a powerful powerful thing to speak into creation with your voice and then you need to practice uh discipline and awareness and i can't say that what i wrote you know when i was 16 years old you know isn't somehow emotive in a destructive way but again I made a personal decision to choose my path in this life as an artist. You know, for the right or wrong reasons, that's what I did. It helps to have the right reasons and it helps to have the right heart. And so, that you know, I am a work in progress. I'm not a saint, but I am a little more moral than most. I don't like to sully myself with a with things that are not of the divine and the you can't really get away from it the profane is involved with the divine the conscious is involved with the subconscious the divine mind of and life is connected to death and we can't completely free ourselves and so this is this is what creativity does it it releases the pain or the anguish or it's like a momentary fix without any drugs, without any alcohol, without any addictions, without any abuse. And that is the creative cradle that we want to attain. Not to bring perfection to an already uh, perfectly dark and light cosmos we can't get away from it i mean unless we become like gandhi or buddha and then really denounce all the worldly pleasures and all the worldly foods and you know go live in a cave and then meet some enlightened masters i mean ultimately we're all in it so as an artist like at a young age i came to that realization that I had on one hand life and on the other hand death. Now the shadow <laughs> the shadow will come up and bite you in the ass if you're not careful. And so then you know that's why you have psychology and philosophies and all of these different archetypes and all the stuff that you work with as a as an artist. And, and filmmakers do it, writers do it and you know you tap into that and uh, there is a responsibility that's for sure however giving yourself the license to be creative doesn't necessarily mean that you're giving yourself the license to be destructive you can move through the dark and you can move through the light with a resolution and the resolution of conflict is what the universe and your purpose in the end is all about how can we bring resolution to the conflict of racism? How can we bring resolution to the conflict of sexism? How can we bring resolution to the conflict of ageism? How can we bring resolution to the conflict of any kind of abuse, any kind of humanitarian abuse? 
See, these th- then you're using your gift for a greater good bes- despite yourself, you know. And so my creative and my destructive energies, I'm a fucking Leo. Excuse my language. I'm a Leo. It's like a cat. A cat will go out and like hunt a rabbit, hunt something. And do you think the cat feels like sad about it? Probably not, man. So there is a part in me that is a gangster. You know, there's a part of me that is a wild cat. I can't be tamed. I, I am here to do a certain amount of good work. And people will make an, an internal decision to do their good work or to bring more harm. And then that's their karma. But personally for me, I've chosen to bring awareness through creativity, even in that fear because we're creating, we're creatresses, we're creators, we're co-creating with the universe. And some people, what I'm, what I may or may not be creating is too crazy, too wild. It's not, it has too much ego, it's not tameable, blah, 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 but that's, that's me. Why would, why, why, why tame something that's ferocious? That's dangerous. <laughs>